Good afternoon. I've got about half an hour. Um, there's a gentleman who wants to come and buy my Volvo A50 T5 that I bought last week. I don't really know why I'm selling it, but I just thought I'd put everything up for sale and see what happens. Uh, the X5 is gone. The Renault 10 I had a viewing today, but apparently someone wants to come look at this. So um, every now and then you've got to clear them all out and start again. I really like this car. I really, really like this car. But if I keep it, I'm going to end up spending loads of money on it, fixing all little bits and bobs. And even after I've done all that, it'll still only do 25 miles to gallon. <laughs> so uh, never mind. Anyway, this is an interesting one that I want to share with you because no one else has shared this with me. Hi, Jeff. Great channel. Well done. And thank you. Not that bit. <laughs> Government's remote control of car use installed on my car with no informed consent. The government's remote control of car was installed on my car with no informed consent. I bought a Hyundai Kona EV 18 months ago, 71 plate, from a dealer. Lovely guys and great service. The car went in for a MAPS upgrade and came back as a write-off for me. They took the opportunity to upgrade the Blue Link Linfotainment software. And when I started it up, I was presented with a new screen saying terms and conditions changed. Normally, I just click OK as it's just a car, so nothing sinister. But I was bored that day, and as a serial entrepreneur, I had plenty of experience with contracts. So I flicked down a few pages, and then another few, and then 30, and was about to jump out when I read it was now equipped with geofencing and geotiming capabilities. WTF was that. I looked it up. They can set range limits and time limits remotely. The terms say it's not used without consent and then in brackets, unless required by law. So the last sentence voids the whole thing. I found one country debating geofencing laws. I went back to the dealer. The sales guys said they'd never heard of it. The service manager said it was Big Brother. Meetings with the directors are a no informed consent. Uh, he's obviously not consented to this being on the car. He wasn't informed that this was being put on the car. And he wasn't informed that if it was being put on the car, it would add this new geofencing, um, geotiming capability to the car. So there's absolutely a, a consent issue here. Hyundai wouldn't reverse the update. I was the first to complain. Evidently, again, problem with the fact that people aren't paying attention to what's going on with their highly technical vehicles. Uh, the car with the mark of the beast was now really no good to me. Eventually, the dealer agreed to swap with zero profit. Uh, he took the Kona in at retail and sold me an older i20 at cost. If the car is pre-SOS button, there's no phone card installed and it's not connected. Now, I've had this debate with my wife because she has a 2016 BMW 1 Series. And because I don't drive it all that often, the one evening we were doing something in the car with the kids, not dogging, because that's usually when you use your internal light, isn't it? Especially where I'm parked right now in this car park. Um, it, Lee, the EV map master, would know all about this sort of stuff. Anyway, we weren't dogging. I was just looking for the light you know, the internal light that you click. There you go, look, I click it in my old fashioned Volvo. It makes a clicky noise. Just enjoying the noise there. And the lights come on in the back and in the middle. However, in my wife's car, when I clicked the button that I thought was gonna switch all the lights on in the car, I then heard a voice say, can I take your details? What's your emergency? Because it's got one of them SOS buttons, which I absolutely hate. So if the car is pre SOS button, there's no phone card installed and it's not connected i did lots of research including a high tech including a high tech crash repairers who said some everyday cars are already fully autonomous just not switched on let me read that again i did lots of research including with some it's it's not written the best sorry buddy your writing wasn't fantastic i did lots of research including with a, with some high tech crash repairers who said that some everyday cars are already fully autonomous already the technology is already there in the cars. They just haven't switched it on. This is pretty scary stuff. Uh, I visited other brand dealers and all the salespeople were unaware. But when they went and checked, all brands are using the same tech platform just with their own brand names. Wow. This is like revelatory stuff. I've never been so relieved 
to be in an older basic car. Your viewers just need to check their terms and conditions and see if they have it. And if not, suggest an issue suggest issue dealer with notice not to install it and for you to do so it means full refund of the car price get them to sign it so what he's saying is check the terms and conditions of your car and see if you have this software installed and if it is installed without your consent you sounds like you've got grounds to get a refund on the car because you never consented to that being on there so everybody who's got i assume everybody who's got and this is an 18 month car, old car as well. This isn't even a new car. Everyone who's got a Kona, Hyundai Kona EV, will have gone in for the update and they will have done what people normally do, which is, oh great, yeah, really nice. Uh, when it was in, they said they'd update it to the latest software for me. That was lovely of them. And then when you start the car, it goes, your car's been updated, new terms and conditions, you go, yeah, that's fine. And you carry on with your life. Not realizing that you've just given the manufacturer permission to collude with the government to geofence and geo time your access to your car let's just take a minute to talk about what that means geofencing is exactly what they have on shopping trolleys at the supermarket to stop you from taking that supermarket beyond the perimeter taking the supermarket to stop you from taking the trolley beyond the perimeter of the supermarket okay it stops you from taking that trolley somewhere where they don't want you to take it what does that mean when you apply it to a car, Jeff? It means you're not going to be able to drive your car beyond the limits of what the government have decided that you're allowed to drive it. So all of these conspiracies about 15-minute cities and zones and climate lockdowns, how are they going to implement them? Well, probably with the geofencing capabilities that built into the car, using the infrastructure that they're already installing in the roads with all the cameras and all the sensors and all the new technology that is going up. And all you've got to do is look for it. Anytime you go out for a drive anywhere, look for all the new cameras and all the new technology that is being installed on all the roads everywhere. You'll see it. Geotiming capabilities. Uh, now, that's interesting because curfews, for example, um, let's say we introduce a curfew where no one's allowed to drive their car after seven o'clock. That's all well and good, you might say. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, now, what about if we say no one's allowed to drive their car on a Sunday to save the planet? Well, they'll just switch your car off on a Sunday to save the planet. And that might sound like a really outlandish conspiracy theory, but that's already been discussed. I've already seen articles discussing having save the planet, don't drive your car days and banning people from driving on certain days just to save the planet. So geo, I keep forgetting what they're called, geofencing and geotiming capabilities equipped on not just electric cars. We're talking about anything with an SOS button. And as I said, my wife's car is a 2016. So that's basically, if we take that as the start point, any car built from 2016 to today could well have geofencing and geotiming capabilities built into the software. I suggest you go and read the terms and conditions on your car, and I suggest you check with your dealer as to whether or not this is on there, because I'm pretty sure you don't want it on there. Anyway, in other news, I've got a car for sale. It's a 2016 BMW uh, 116 diesel in Valencia orange with ivory heated leather seats, and it's absolutely lovely. It's done 103,000 miles, and it's got one of these SOS buttons as well. So when and if you have a crash, um, you can, you know, connect to someone who can sort you out. Or if there's a climate lockdown, you won't be allowed to drive it. Do you want to see some scenery? Let's finish this video. Let's finish this video with some scenery. And I'm not going to comment. I'm not going to say anything. You do it in the comments for me. I'm just going to show you some scenery. In fact, I'll show you my basic Volvo while we're at it. Uh, Jeff, you've forgotten that you're not filming this live and nobody's commenting and nobody's speaking. Right, how do I do this? There we go, look, turn the camera around. That's my camera mount for today. I put it half on the magnet and then I half rest it on an empty packet of top trumps. And the reason it's empty is because I left it there earlier on and I swung around a corner and all my top trumps landed on the floor. Should we just pick one at random? Let's do it. It's a BMW 318. And you'll notice that it's a, a European top trumps packet and someone has written on the speed in miles per hour. What a great car. Now, inside my car here, I've got a lot of top trumps and some filming scripts on the floor. Nothing, just a radio. 
and a tape adapter, an old fashioned, do you remember these? Yeah, that's what I've got, tape adapter. Ain't nobody tracking me with my tape. Um, how hot you want the air, where you want the air, how fast you want the air, if you want the air to recirculate. And then I've just got a basic dashboard with some GoPro batteries on it, because GoPros are rubbish. Up here, I don't have an SOS button, but I do have a sunroof. And if you look through the sunroof, you'll see the thing that I want you to comment on. Let's go outside and take a little look at it. Very wispy. But that's a good one, isn't it? That is a good one. Anyway, wonder what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. I'm going to hazard a guess and say it's going to be grey. Thanks for watching.